day, Orange County, and welcome to my kitchen. This is a first, and this is all kinds of exciting that now I actually have a kitchen that faces in a way that I can actually share it with you. So happy Mother's Day, all, and this is my nod and my ode to my mother in thinking about mothers all over the world and people who nurture and love, food is always a central topic. And of course, in my family, like in most families, Mother's Day is focused on mom. And around mom, there's gotta be some kind of food. But the truth is that in our family, our tradition was to plant the garden for mom on Mother's Day. So I started wondering about your traditions and what did you do and what do you do? And what are the gifts that you remember giving or receiving the most? In my memory, the gifts of giving and receiving have always been time, quality time with loved ones and the opportunity to share a great meal. So in thinking of how we do that in my family over the years, it's evolved to my celebration for my mother and my sister-in-law who are the moms who cook all the time that I prepare Mother's Day and that I share Mother's Day with my family so that they can relax and rest. And if we plant the garden, great. And if we don't, we have fabulous flowers anyway. So I wanted to bring this opportunity to you. And I also wanted to not turn on the oven and not turn on the stove. So we've been having a little bit of a heat wave over here. And so the opportunity is to create something easy that may not be my former five ingredient rule, but I opted for a large charcuterie board that could be either a meal or an appetizer or snacks throughout the day. Whatever you love to make, that's the thing that your family loves most is whatever you are happiest sharing with them. So I find that food boards are a great opportunity, not only to provide something for everyone, because if you know what everyone loves, you can very easily include everyone in your selection on the board, but also to clean out your refrigerator, because chances are you have a lot of the things that you need already in your cupboard or in your fridge or freezer. And so it becomes a little bit of a hunt, but it also becomes a personal challenge for me anyway, to figure out what am I going to do to fill a board that will actually feed seven to 10 people. So that's what we're gonna do here today. In, prepar in preparation for this board creation, I've pulled together all the things that I want to include on my board. So I'm going to walk you through my preparation and my favorite items, and a little bit about the family and the process because we have two octogenarians, well, a 90-year-old and an 85-year-old, who have specific flavor choices and taste preferences. I have a 14-year-old and a 12-year-old who have their favorite preparations, and then there are the rest of us. So those two start my process, and I begin the process with these little bowls. So I will scatter the bowls around. So I know I'm gonna need them somewhere. And they're gonna be filled with sauces and dips and things that I don't want to have run all over the table or all over the board. So we have mustard, which will go nicely with cheeses and meat. And then I have a dip which I have my drawers right here. So the dip will go with the crackers or the fruit. It's a spinach and sour cream dip that everybody loves. And that's the thing, I know what they like, so it sure makes it easy and a lot more fun to prepare. We have their favorite olives, that's already in a separate bowl. And I have jellies and jams. So we love, fig jam and sour cherry jam with cheeses 
and fruits, and they're great just for dipping. So each one of those will go in its own bowl here. And that will pretty much take care of our four little bowls and our extra dipping sauces. Now I can start placing things around the plate. So I have a selection of meats. I have some Italian salami, which everybody loves. And so we're gonna tuck that up here in the corner. And then I have sliced prosciutto that I'm going to stick in space right here between the olives and the mustard. And it fills the space just perfectly. So if I put in my priority items first, then I can decide what's next. So for this one, I have a very large piece of cheese. So that's gonna go over here between the jams and the jellies. And then I have two other cheeses that I've already sliced and I'm going to place them near the meat, a little bit fancy maybe, kind of stack them. Just makes it a little more fun. And this is the kind of thing that you can put on some music, put on a movie, just work your way through it, make it a fun time. I love this stuff because there's no timing, there's no deadlines. And honestly, if people start to arrive while you're still preparing, they can either help or they can dig in and enjoy. So that's up to you, what you want them to do while you're still working on preparing their food. So that's two, and with that, I am actually gonna move this around and stick mustard over here and keep the jams in the middle. Because then I'm gonna take my other cheese. I have cheddar, I have Jarlsberg, and I have an Italian rubbed cheese that I've never had before, but it looked super yummy. And so the other cheese is gonna go over here next to the prosciutto. And these are all little triangles, so we're going to stack them so that it's easy to pick them up. I have little forks and also little spoons for the sauces. And of course, there's always the crackers and the fruit and vegetables that they can lift it up with on their own. So let's see how this is all coming together. Once I fill that space, then I have some really colorful vegetables. I have yellow peppers and red peppers, which everybody loves. And they add some great color to the tray. So they're gonna go here in the middle. For now, they may move. That's the other thing. They can go wherever you want it to go. And you can leave them on or take them off as you see fit change your mind. And I also, as you see, I don't put the bread and the crackers on the tray. I keep them separate. If I have room, I can, but personally, I prefer to keep them separate. And that seems to work out best for us. Also, since I will have another bowl of breads, which will be gluten-free for me, the breads and crackers. So now I've got the cheese and I've got the peppers in place. And I've got an apple here because who doesn't love some apple with their cheese? And you definitely want to have some fruit to go along with the spread. So I have apples and I also have grapes that are going to go on the tray. Again, these are just everybody's favorite things in my family. So when you're thinking about what to put on your board, what are the favorite things in your family? What do they love most? And what will they appreciate? Because it shows that you thought of them. And then I've got yellow and red grapes, which are going to go in a couple of places here, places of honor scattered around. 
as not just filler, but they're easy to grab and I cut them up into small little bunches. So everybody can just pick up a small bunch if that's all that they want. And if they want more, they can always come back for more. Other thing I prepared are these mozzarella, tomato and olive skewers. So these will go up here in the corner and that way the grabbable end of the skewer is hanging off the tray and everybody can just grab, whoops, lost that one, grab a skewer as they go. And let's see what else do we have here. So we have figs, which I love. And when they come in, the Black Mission figs, when they come in and are soft and chewy, that's the time to grab them. So we'll put a few of these in here. Again, this is just what we love. So whatever you love is the best choice to put on your board. And I have pickles and some cucumbers. So carrots and string beans over here, some haricot vert. We do go through a lot of vegetables in this house. So some haricot vert right tucked in here in the middle, not just for the flavor and the nutritional value, but for the color and the beauty of them. And then I'm gonna put some baby carrots over here where I still have space. And again, I'm just filling in around the pieces that I know everybody's going to want. So that's where we're going to go there. And I have some corny shown here that I can tuck in. And I don't want the corny shown pickle to interrupt the flavor of the other food. So where am I going to put that? I think I'm going to move the meat up and I'm going to tuck the cornichon right back here in the corner. So I've dried them off a little bit so that they aren't so wet and drippy, but they can fit right in the corner there. And the kids really love them. I don't know what it is with kids and little teeny things, but they do love them. And so we've got the peppers and we've got the grapes and I'm going to mix the peppers and all together in one giant little corner mountain over here because I need the space for something else that I have already prepared, which is going to be this kielbasa. So I put the kielbasa is already cooked. It's, it's really a turkey kielbasa that I keep in the freezer all the time. The kids absolutely love it. And when I have the opportunity, I just throw it in a pan and sear it up, give it a char. And that's a family favorite. So we're going to tuck those here in the middle and give that a little mountain of kielbasa right there. Whoops, one runaway. Okay, one more on top and some almonds. My dad loves almonds, loves the crunch along with the cheese. So we're going to drop these in between the other selections on the plate and fill up some of that space. And the truth is, even though the board looks so big <laughs> when it's empty, when it comes right down to it, as you fill it, depending on how many things you're going to use, it will fill up pretty quickly. So in addition to all of this, I'm going to add some toothpicks for the kielbasa. Skewers are already good. Oh, and we've got some apricots. Don't want to forget those. And so we're going to tuck the apricots in here next to the cheese. These are things that'll just slide in between other things for added color and added texture, but also added flavor and fun. And that's the beauty of these boards. You can do them for any occasion. You can do them on any theme. I'm sure you're already doing them. And I scour 
online and magazines. I love to see the different suggestions of what people are using and what are some new and interesting foods that I haven't tried or that I'd like to introduce to the family. And that way it makes it a little surprise party every time we do it. You never quite know what's going to show up on the board. And somehow at the end of the night, the boards are always empty. I'm going to clean this up a bit and uh, come back and show you the finished board and the dessert board and the drinks that I serve along with it. So what we've prepared here is a full charcuterie board. We have meats and cheeses and dips and sauces and even skewers that the kids can pick up and eat on their own, which they love. We've got crackers and some breads that people can dip. And of course we need something to drink with that. So in my shopping and my exploration of discovery, um, I found this is my new favorite rosé. It's called Summer in a Bottle. I found it at Wegmans and it's delicious. It's from Long Island. I found this one at Costco. So I'm all about experimenting right now with rosés. They feel very springy and very summery. And the other thing that I love to do with them is mix them with a fruit nectar. This is sour cherry. I also keep peach in the house because it's mom's favorite. And we'll either mix that with some sparkling water or we can mix it with a little bit of the nectar and a little bit of rosé. And that turns into something super special. And once we have that ready, we are ready for dessert. And so not to be outdone by the main board, the dessert board is also an option. So here we have all kinds of little specialties. Again, something for everyone, chocolate lovers, non-chocolate lovers, fruit tarts for spring, little floret mousses, from Trader Joe's, they're always right there with the season when you need them. You don't have to make everything from scratch, but it sure is a great way to test what's out there, taste things that you haven't tried before, share your favorite things with your family and share their favorite things with them. And among my favorite things is sharing things with you. Thank you so much for staying with Good Day Orange County, for coming back again and again. I really appreciate you and I wish you a happy spring and to all the mothers out there. Happy, happy Mother's Day. We'll see you next time. Good day, Orange.